Hello, and welcome back to the series of videos on the ratio test and the root test. In the last video, I just did an overview of, of all the tests and I did uh, the introduction of the ratio test and the root test. And I did two examples. The numbering of the examples is a bit off. I did example one and example three. In this video, my aim is to do three more examples. I consider those two examples that I did in the previous video to be easier. And then I would consider these three to be medium as far as their difficulty level. And I'll do one more video after this where I do two what I would tag as difficult examples. So here we go with this um, particular series in factorial over 5 to the n. Now the factorial as a mathematical symbol means to multiply <clears throat> that number times all the counting numbers lower than it. Um, we're going to restrict the in this sense to have the uh, factorial be uh, some some integer value in front of it okay and so if, if you have five factorial that's five four three two one the product of all those guys okay and so our job uh, ratio test works really well with factorials if you see a factorial that's a red alert that should go off to think about using the ratio test in the ratio test our job is to <clears throat> do the limit of the ratio of successive terms a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n the next term divided by the current term absolute value and find out what happens as n goes to infinity now in this we'd have to replace the n's with n plus 1's and divide by the original but that's just a mess to write it out so I want you to know that there's a fast way to get to the result by replacing the ends with n plus ones giving each term their own fraction at the part of the fraction where they're at so n plus one factorial in the numerator of one fraction five to the n plus one in the denominator of the other fraction and so in those gaps there since we have to divide by the original a sub n what will happen is they'll flip-flop and they'll, they'll basically end up being uh, reciprocated and we have Underneath the n plus 1 factorial, we have the original n factorial. On top of the 5 to, to the n plus 1, we have the original 5 to the n. And it allows us to be able to um, get there quicker than writing out that previous step and then flipping it and then juggling it. We can get there right away. And now we can consider these two separate limits. And so we take the action of breaking apart the exponent on the 5 to the n plus 1 and then breaking apart the n plus 1 factorial. You see, 5 factorial is the same thing as 5 times 4 factorial. The way it works is you can consider yourself factoring out one term and still having a factorial after that. n plus 1 factorial is the same as n plus 1 times n factorial. Break apart the 5 to the n plus 1 as 5 to the n times 5, and this allows us to be able to cancel. Okay, and so we have n factorials canceling, 5 to the n's canceling, and we're simply left with n plus 1 over 5. We are doing the limit as n goes to infinity. And so that's definitely going to be an infinite limit. The point is that it's greater than 1, so it diverges. All right, that's example 2. Now we're going to jump to example 4. Example 3 was done in the previous video. All right, in example 4, we have 10 divided by the quantity of 3 plus 1 over n, and that's raised to the 2n. Anytime you have a constant without any kind of a mention of an n, as a factor, you can pull that constant out. It won't affect the whether the series converges or diverges. And so pull the 10 out and deal with this series. The reason why you want to do that, because I want to be able to raise this to the nth power and execute the root test. And so I'm going to just rearrange the denominator at 1 to the nth, where n is always integers. That's always going to be the same as 1. And so um, when we execute the root test and do the nth root of the a sub n, we can then represent that a sub n there as the 3 plus 1 over n who is squared. 
and then raise that to the n. Okay. In fact, we'll take the whole fraction and raise it to the nth power so we can cancel out those terms. Okay. Now, 1 to the n, as long as n is integer, is an integer value like what we're doing in this series, I don't care what you raise, what integer you raise 1 to, it's going to be a 1. And so it's perfectly fine for us to take this whole fraction and raise it to the nth power. Cancel. Because if you raise to a power, you raise to another power, you multiply those exponents. So the n and the 1 over n cancel. And we're left with this limit. The 1 over n goes to 0 for sure. As n goes to infinity, that gives us a limit of 1 ninth. The 3 still has to be squared. This limit of 1 ninth is for sure less than 1. And it means to us then that our series is convergent. With the 10 put back in, it's convergent. With the 10 out, it's convergent. And so that's our second example. Root test, because we can represent it as being raised to the nth power. So when we um, raise to the nth root, the nth power and the nth root cancel each other out. All right, let's do one more in this set of medium difficulty level um, examples series using the ratio and the root test. This is going to be another factorial. So root test. Um, now be careful here. In executing the root test, our job is to divide a sub n plus 1 by a sub n. But the replacing of n with n plus 1 can get a bit tricky on this denominator term. You see, it's n plus 1 who, who gets doubled, just like n got doubled. But then after that, there's a plus 1 that can be really confusing. And so I recommend like figuring what that out, figuring out what that is on the side and then going to the simplified version here. Um, distributing the 2, what you get is 2n plus 2 and then plus the 1. So what you get is 2n plus 3 factorial. The quantity factorial, that is. Um, now, what I've done here is I've, I've given, I've replaced my n's with n plus 1's and given each their own fraction and I kept them in the location where they're at, numerator versus denominator. Because when I divide by a sub n, I reciprocate. And so underneath the n plus 1 squared, I'll put the n squared. On top of the 2n plus 3 factorial, I'll put the original 2n plus 1 quantity factorial. Okay. And I can now zero in and focus on just these two. Uh, let's for a second ignore the first one. It's a simple limit. Let's focus our attention on that second one and do some algebra to that second fraction there. When you have 2n plus 3 factorial... It's like taking off a 5 and taking off a 4 before you get the 3 factorial. We take off a 2n plus 3. We take a 2n plus 2 off. And then we get down to 2n plus 1 factorial. Just keep going until you get to the part where you could cancel out those 2n plus 1 factorials. It will cancel. That first limit is just a 1. It's n squared on top of n squared. There are some other terms like 2n and 1 in the numerator, but it's a ratio of fractions. It's, it's a rational function who has a degree of the numerator equal to the degree of the denominator. So the limit is just going to be the ratio of the coefficients on those leading terms, 1. And so we have these surviving terms in the denominator here, and n is going off to infinity. So with them being in the denominator going off to infinity, this limit is 0. That's fine. Less than 1. So it's convergent. Okay, so those are medium difficulty level. In the next video, we'll do all right, what I would think would be two uh, very difficult um, e examples. Uh, they'll both be ratio tests. They'll both have factorials in them, but higher order factorials. And so thank you for watching. My name is Nakai Rimmer. I'm here to help you through this, this journey of trying to figure out what's going on with calculus too. Um, please uh, ask me any questions. If, you're, if you um, have any questions, comment down below. Reach out to me, um, like and subscribe. I'm here to help you. See you in the next video.